let's visit the rural countryside of Laporte, Indiana. There, nestled in the trees, we'll find a unique outdoor museum featuring a varied collection of steam equipment. Perhaps no single word means so much to the world of railroading as the word steam. The technology of steam powered the Industrial Revolution of the late 19th century. And without steam technology, there would have been no railroads during that time. And almost nowhere is the legacy of steam preserved and honored as it is at the Heston Steam Museum near LaPorte, Indiana. We have a uh, very unique grounds here. It's 155 acres, but we've got a railroad that takes you on a journey that's two and a half miles long, but it seems a great deal longer. It winds through the woods and it winds past farm fields. It really gives you a sense of what narrow gauge railroading was and uh, it gives you a sense that you've gone somewhere and done something. It also um, it shows you uh, the demonstration of steam that uh, you couldn't get from any book. It, you, you need to come in the gate, take a look around, look at the sawmill and the steam crane and the electric power plant and ride the steam locomotives to, to really understand uh, what, what steam was in the uh, turn of the century in our industrial age. Uh, John Idris started, founded the, the Heston Steam Museum by uh, going out and purchasing a traction engine, steam tractor. He couldn't run it at his property in the city, so he decided to buy uh, some acreage out in the country. That led him to, to this site, and he bought 22 acres. In the course of time, he kind of um, brought in people that were interested in steam and steam equipment that had steam equipment in the uh, early 50s that they put on their first steam show on Labor Day weekend. Elliot Donnelly of R.R. Donnelly and Sons Printing happened out one day and took a look around and saw the guys really worked hard. He was an avid steam buff, railroad buff. He was on the board of three different railroads, I believe. And uh, he decided that uh, he wanted to help them put in a railroad. He put in a very unique three foot and two foot gauge, dual gauge, narrow gauge railroad and, and started buying uh, locomotives and rolling stock to donate to the organization. John Hendris likes to reminisce about his first meeting with Elliot Donnelly, who bankrolled the museum in its early days. A big tall guy, uh, old burnt in his hat and hair stuck out and uh, ragged as a barrel of kraut and introduced me as Elliot Donnelly. He says, listen, he says, why don't you take one of your key people and yourself and Aker and I will go to dinner tonight. Around eight o'clock, we took off in his uh, car, uh, one of my boys here and the banker and off we went to New Buffalo, Michigan to Little Bohemia. We parked our carcasses there and uh, uh, started ordering drinks. And uh, he says, why don't you pick up some acreage uh, adjoining your 22 acres, he says, and put it in your name so the price don't go to Paris. He says, we'll pick up 100, 150 acres. And I said, well, I said, hell, us guys couldn't even buy a railroad tie we're so broke. He says, don't worry about that. He says, uh, I'll start you out with $150,000. Well, we bought one under the table, the boy with me. And uh, as the evening went on, he says, the more I drink, the looser I get with my money. Well, I made sure the Glasses were full to the brim, I'll tell you, with the waitress. Before we left, he was going to give us $250,000. Building and maintaining all this has long depended on the dedication of tireless volunteers. The backbone of this place is its volunteers. We could not operate without them. Aboard! Eyeball! So we've, we've got people that um, either uh, they think I think most of the people think they were born just a little bit too late. They, they want to experience steam and uh, experience uh, kind of a way of life that, that uh, is past. With seven locomotives, an eclectic mix of rolling stock and four different narrow gauge formats, the Heston Museum is truly a unique experience for railroading fans both young and old. We've got a two foot and three foot narrow gauge railroad, which is the, one of the most unique railroads in the world. We also have a 14 inch gauge, which is a quarter scale sized live steam railroad that was donated by the Elliott Donnelly family of Lake Forest, Illinois. 
The inch and a half uh, railroad, the little trains as we call them, are uh, basically built by the fellows that run them. And uh, they've got about a mile of track and it, it goes underneath a bridge and back over it. It's quite a beautiful trip. Narrow gauge is probably the most rare of uh, any type of uh, train. Standard gauge, you can, you can find passenger cars, cabooses, locomotives, but narrow gauge is really, was really specialized and there is a whole lot of it that was scrapped for the war effort or just plain wore out. Uh, one of the locomotives, the CSK, which we call it, is uh, built in Czechoslovakia in 1940 for the, war, for the German war effort. When the Nazis invaded Czechoslovakia, they hid the locomotive in a straw stack and there it sat through the whole war. This wonderful mix of railroading technology contrasts and cooperates beautifully with the splendors of the museum's natural surroundings. We've got 155 acres that our railroad uh, runs through and it's very secluded, it's out in the country and it just makes for a wonderful ride on the train as you, as you go through these uh, hills and uh, see these, these beautiful uh, oak trees and, 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 and it's, it's just such a, uh, such a trip back in time. So you kind of forget about your life and, and kind of uh, get lost in, in the woods and the, uh, the ride. So if there's any history buff in you at all, your heart would certainly be warmed by a visit to Indiana's Heston Steam Museum a down-home archive of America's steamy past.